Hello everybody and welcome back to Arv's Trains. My name is Corey and in today's video we're doing something that I've been wanting to do for quite a while now. I've always wanted to do a train collection video, whether that be O scale or HO scale. And by train collection I really mean rather just looking at the locomotives of course, but I've been wanting to do a video like that forever because a lot of the O gauge and HO scale YouTubers I'd watch would always do video collections and stuff like that or showcasing their locomotives, other people locomotives and stuff like that. So I thought for today's little comeback video so to say, why not do just that? So in today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at, well, part one of three of my HO scale locomotives. I don't have that many, but it's enough to where if I filmed all for one video, it'd probably be like an hour long or something. So I don't wanna make it a terribly long video, so I thought it'd be easier to just split it into three parts and do some locomotives in each and every video. So in today's video, I believe we're looking at either six or seven locomotives, and it's a lot of fun seeing kinda how everything started because how I'm gonna try and plan out this little mini series, so to say, is doing the locomotives of in order of how I got them, or at least how I remember getting them, or timeline, and so on and so forth. So the first few locomotives we'll look at are the very early days of myself being into HO scale, since we'll be taking a look at the HO scale collection, because if I tried O scale, it would take way too long. I have many a many a locomotive, yes I do, and it'd, it'd be ages to get, although that'd be a fun series maybe, maybe to do later this year or something where I start trying to get in the O scale locomotive collection of course, but HO is a little easier and it's a little smaller too, so I think we'll at least start off with that one, but yeah, I think I got everything down, at least what we're going to talk about, so, but yeah, anyways, I hope you all enjoyed this video, and if you do, remember to like it, and if you have any bits you want to comment on, whether it be your favorite horn, or if you have a locomotive like this, or your favorite locomotive in today's video, just let me know down in those comments below, but yeah, uh, let's go! Alright, well, the first locomotive we'll be taking a look at here is my, one of the earliest locomotives I ever bought, it's my Bachman. Delaware and Hudson RS3 number 4103. This is, uh, if you go to train shows and whatnot, I'm sure you've seen a DNH RS3 in this number. This is, I believe, the only DNH Lightning Stripe RS3 they ever did, or at least with this number to my knowledge. I remember going to train shows and seeing the only Bachman ones were all 4103, so it didn't feel that special anymore after I had gotten this one, but. Yeah, this is one of the very first HO scale models I had ever gotten. By that, I probably got this fella in maybe late 2018, but definitely 2019 I remember having it by. I don't have like specific pinpoints on when I did and didn't get these locomotives. Some I do know when I got them, others I just generally know I must have got it sometime that year, but I think I remember this one coming in over winter break, so... Either way, though, talking about the locomotive, it is one of my favorites in my collection, but really because it's barely Bachman anymore. This locomotive here was originally DCC, of course, DCC sound. I mean, it's got underneath, you can kind of see its little speaker right there. You can kind of just see the underneath of the whole thing, but it's got DCC sound on board, and I had gotten it upgraded with a TCS decoder because the original Bachman one had went bad, and I was like, all right, then why not go deep diving into this thing and give it something that, like, you know, that'll really make it sound nice. So, got it a really nice decoder, and then I got it weathered by Upstate Custom Models. I'll be mentioning them probably several times this video or whatnot because I got several of my models model or weathered by Matt over there. So he did an absolutely great job making this thing look dirty. I mean, this is how an RS3 should look. I've ever seen a clean Alco, neither have I. <laughs> so. This one here not only looks great, but it sounds great too. I mean, it's just one of my favorites to run around the layout. It just goes nice and slow. It can go fast too. It looks great just being all weathered and dirty, passing by the pretty foliage and stuff. It just looks like how it would have a traditional DNH 
RS3 in the mid to late 70s would have looked like in these colors here, assuming it didn't get rebuilt or something, and then with the rebuild, that getting repainted too. So this is really has that kind of dirty old workhorse type of look to it, which I really, really like. But yeah, the decoder is wonderful. I mean, it's got so many different sound options, like so many different horns and bells. The two I found are the two I like the most. Although the horn that it has on the model does not match the sound at all, but the sound I believe has a very D and H sounding horn, and same for the bell too. I've at least heard it on a few RS threes and all. But yeah, this one I've had the longest of my current fleet. The locomotives I had before, which was a Bachman two six zero, I no longer have, and a Pennsylvania Railroad GP seven, I believe, both of which are sold off. So this is pretty much the last of the original Littleville fleet, this RS3 here. When I started building the layout, this is one of the few locomotives I had that I would kind of run around the incomplete Littleville before I even started it, when it was just a loop of track that was not, you know, glued down to foam or anything like that. So this RS3 has seen it all, and I love it to death, and it works absolutely greatly out. Play some video of it now for you. I'm sure I already have, but just of it roaming around the layout and all its cool sounds and all. If you want me to do a more in-depth video on a TCS decoder locomotive like this, definitely say so in the comments below. I'd love to do a deep dive on all this thing has to offer, but that is 4103, my good old friend. Next one we have is Delaware and Hudson GP 38-27303. This one is another one of my very early locomotives. I'm pretty sure I got this one in early 2019, but definitely 2019 to say the most. This one came off of eBay, same as 4103, I forgot to mention, but this one is one of my greatest buys just because I got it DCC, DCC no sound for I think $130. And these days, as you guys know, it is so hard to find a good DCC locomotive that's weathered for like, it feels like under $250. So this thing was an absolute steal. And I love it so much. I mean, the detail on it is immaculate. I mean, it's a wonderful Athern model. I believe it's Athern Genesis Blue Box. If I, or well, not Athern Blue Box. There's a very big difference between those two. But Athern Genesis with a dark blue box. So it's technically blue box. But either way, the detail on this thing is wonderful. And the lights are great. But the reason it was so cheap was because the decoder in it was kind of bad. It was underpowered. So I sent this to Matt Sharp from Upstate Custom Models, and he not only did a sound installation for it, but looked at the decoder and found that the decoder inside was meant for a N-scale locomotive, not an HO one. So they pulled it out and put in a new sound, a new decoder, one with the little sugar cube, cube sound speaker, and it is wonderful. It's one of my favorites, if not my favorite locomotive in the collection because it looks and operates great. All of the lights are so, so good. I love it so much, but unfortunately it is missing its horn on the top. 
when I went to the great train extravaganza with Littleville. At some point, the horn snapped off and I never found it again. So sadly, I, I think it's missing. It's Nathan P3. That by <laughs> It's going to be a while till I can find another one at least and try to get it on top. But this model looks and sounds great. And just like 4103, it runs really, really well too. It's another favorite in the collection, which I'll show you right now but it's a it's a super cool model and 7303 itself i have no clue about 4103 but 7303 used to go up and down the main line i'm close to the canadian they're now canadian pacific but former dnh main line and although i don't think i probably was alive but I never would have known that 7303 was the one going up and down the line. But I'm sure its horn was blasting all day and all night going up and down the tracks. And for as long as it's been over here in the system. But what an absolutely wonderful locomotive. I love this thing. It is just a, a five-star five star piece, if I say so myself. Next up on the old rotisserie dish, <laughs> that's what I'm going to call it now, but this here is Saratoga North Creek 8524, a B39-8 if I remember correctly, and this is a very special locomotive, and, the, and that it's also another early one too, I'm going in order of, well, again, when I got them, oldest to newest, so, but... This one here is a very hard to find Atlas model. I believe this is Atlas Silver, I'm pretty sure. But this is a hard to find Atlas model because they just don't make them any full anymore and the Saratoga and North Creek has been defunct since 2018. For those who don't know, which I'm pretty sure is most people, the Saratoga North Creek Railway, I believe operated from either 2011 or 2012 perhaps to 2018, but they operated on the Delaware and Hudson's Adirondack Branch, which runs from Saratoga, New York to North Creek, New York, and that's the same branch my line, the Saratoga, Corinth, and Hudson Railway, operates on a portion of, which operates between the sections of Saratoga and Corinth, which is about I guess a little less than halfway on the line or maybe like one-third of the whole branch line assuming you're counting the Tahaz bit but anyway though I remember seeing 8524 and this is one of the only Saratoga and North Creek locomotives I believe a main a pretty big manufacturer such as Atlas ever produced they're trying to get them maybe to do or I don't know who but just a lot of rail buffs they're trying to get Atlas to make the BL2s the SNC had, but I don't know if they ever will, or whoever makes BL2s, which a lot of manufacturers do. But either way, though, this is a very special piece because it's not only hard to find, but I just somehow got lucky and got one off of eBay and then got a DCC decoder. And I believe it was DCC ready when I got it. But either way, though, it's a silent DCC locomotive I have in it 
Look, again, detail on this thing just looks really nice. I mean, just all the angles, all the little doors and, you know, bolts and whatnot and grab irons and that stuff. It really does look really nice for an Atlas model. And it runs really well, too. Again, although it doesn't have DCC sound, it likes to crawl slow. But I like to move her faster because she never would have crawled in service speed. She was normally pretty fast on the old Adirondack Branch mainline, so to say. So, yeah, several of the people I work with at the Saratoga, Corinth, and Hudson remember C8524. And from what I've been told, it wasn't a very good operational locomotive, so to say, compared to the old BL2s. But either way, it's a very nice locomotive I like to have in the collection. So, again, here's some more footage of her running. Next up is my Walther's Delaware and Hudson PA, number 18, Alco PA that is. This is a very nice little locomotive. And by little, I mean not little at all, because as you can see, it barely fits on this thing, but size of my hand, it isn't that big. But anyways, though, this locomotive, I believe, came out two years ago in 2021, or officially when they launched it, you know, or, well, when the product officially came out to the public, not talking about back orders and that stuff. But either way, though, this is a very nice locomotive in the collection. It is slightly weathered and had some modifications, again, by Upstate Custom Models, Matt Sharp there, who slightly weathered it, gave it some air hoses and stuff, and gave it an accurate horn compared to the one it had before, and it looks really, really nice, and it sounds amazing. I mean, this thing has got one giant speaker underneath that you can't really see, but it is one of my heaviest models, and part of it, again, is, yeah, because it's so big, but... This thing is heavy and its speaker is amazing. So that's what I really like about running this thing because it sounds like a loud Elko as all of these should sound. So it's a very wonderful model that I love to have, but it's kind of given me some problems in the past where it seems like every time I'd bring it to a new layout, it would like automatically reset itself where you had to dig into the decoder to even turn it on be like okay contact address do xyz press a few buttons and then it'll turn on versus just putting it on the tracks and putting in your number or you know the locomotive address and then just pressing the on button so to say which i think on this one is number eight at least in my nce decoder but anyway so this is a very nice mod i love to have and it is a great runner and she loves to crawl and go really nice and slow which is something that's really handy with a passenger unit such as this this is one of the only i think this is the only locomotive i have that was specific for passenger use i don't know when the santa fe originally had this built if this was a passenger unit which i or i believe it was because of the war the what red war bonnet before dnh did their blue war bonnet but Either way, though, when the DNH got these, I think they very rarely did freight. Most of the time, these were all passenger and number 18 especially. And again, number 18 would have went by up and down the house, right by the main line up there during the old passenger service days from Albany to Montreal. So it's a very cool locomotive to have in the collection. And anytime I bring it anywhere, which isn't too often because there aren't many places I can bring it to, but... Whenever I bring it out in public, it is always a favorite every time. Everybody loves to look at it, especially that Mars light. That's one of my favorite features of the whole thing. But yeah, great sounding, great looking, great running locomotive, if I say so myself again.
Okay, next up is my Delaware and Hudson Alco RS11 number 5000. This is a relatively newer Atlas model. This probably came out in the mid 2010s, I'd say, give or take, compared to all the others, which are either 2010s or maybe 2020s. But this one here is the first locomotive to introduce that I got at a train store. There aren't many left. This one, I believe, I got at JP's Trains and Hobbies, which unfortunately no longer exists i believe they shut their doors in 2022 but they were a great train store if you were looking for anything delaware and hudson they had a lot of different cool options and this here was one of their models over the over the series i'll be doing there are several models i got from their store but of that dnh dcc of course but this is one of the ones that i'll be introducing first this is a i'm pretty sure this is atlas gold which explains all the really nice detailing especially all the handrails on the front but just circling around this this is a dcc factory or dcc sound factory equipped model this is i believe it's esu look sound However, there's like a whole debate I've seen online to whether how it's pronounced. I'm not even going to, I'm not even going to argue, but this locomotive though looks and sounds great. The detail is very nice. I had it worked on by guess who, Matt, from Upstate Custom Models had to redo the decoder because at some point it went sour and I had to get it fixed. So it runs really well, but I'm gonna have to get this thing weathered at some point because seeing a clean RS11 again, it just doesn't look right. I've always seen in the old slides and pictures online of how dirty these things get and it only looks right getting all dirtied up and it looks so good pulling some really weathered freight cars too. But yeah, this locomotive here, it's a very nice one in the collection, and I love it a lot. The de again, detail is great and all that stuff, and it's one of my favorite Alcos. Not just really in the collection, but just ever. I just love the Alco RS11. It's pr practically their version of the EMD GP7 or 9s or what have you. Just Alco-fied and all, but... Yeah, this thing looks and functions really well, and I'm really happy with how it came out. So play a little bit of that video here, but you'll see how good she is. Second to last here is one of my favorite models. I, I keep saying that a lot, but this one definitely. This is a, I believe again, this is Atlas Gold, a Delaware and Hudson C424, an Alco C424 Phase 1. I can't remember quite what the Phase 1 means, but these are very late DNH early Guilford locomotives, so it's not like, you know, these things were rumbling up and down the tracks in the 60s or what have you, but either way though, this is a very nice model, and again, I'll have to get it weathered at some point, because again, I haven't seen many pictures of what these things would look like clean, but this is a good detail model, it isn't as good as the RS11, but again, this is another one of the locomotives I bought from JP's Trains and Hobbies, and it's DCC Sound, and man is that decoder great the rs11 i don't know why it kind of sounds like a tractor more than it does a locomotive but this thing here looks and sounds like an alco 
and the horn on this thing is amazing. I don't know what the horn is supposed to be, but I love every second of it because it kind of sounds like an old train horn, but it also sounds like a modern one too. Like I could close, I could open my window on a nice, cold, cool summer night and hear it going by in the distance. So this is a really nice locomotive though, and I'd always wanted just an Alco like these. I love the I don't know what you call it, but I'm going to kind of call it a widow's peak cab because you can kind of see how it splits apart in the center there. But I had always wanted a locomotive or an Alco with that split cab, so to say, or kind of arrow facing cab. So this was that locomotive there, and I love the offset horn. But yeah, it's got pretty nice detail, of course, and I hate how I'm showing the undersides of a few and not the others, but there really isn't anything, sp unless if you're like a... HO locomotive nut to where you're like, oh wow, I love seeing the contactors or whatever, but pretty much the underneath of most of these are all the same. But again, it's another great model, which I'll show you right now, some of the sounds and quirks, but love this little thing. It's a great loco and it looks really cool. I love the paint scheme too, but yeah, a nice addition to the collection. And finally on the Lazy Susan for today is this Bachman Spectrum Alco 440. This thing, and well, I mean, I, I don't know the exact model of this thing. I can just barely see the Schenectady Works Alco plan on it. So I at least know it's an Alco 442 I, or 440, but I have no clue, you know, the specific model of this thing or what line you would have seen this on. But this here, I found this little fella on eBay and I had always wanted a really nicely made 440. And this thing is all that. This has been weathered. It had some sort of line on it, but you can barely see the decals anymore. The only remaining decal is the number four on the back, but this thing is superb quality. It's the nicest Bachman product I have. And there's a pretty big jump from regular Bachman to going over to Spectrum, but this thing is wonderful. It's got so many nice, like, hey, like, you know, pipes and handrails and I guess separately applied details and it's it's a good sound decoder it's pretty much the same as the rest of their small steam engine series so maybe some point in the future I'd like to get it upgrade to have more not more accurate but just different sounding you know steamy sounds and especially a different whistle too I'm kind of tired of that classic you know really common Bachman whistle which I'll play for you in just a few seconds here but this thing looks great and it it runs okay it's a great locomotive to have if you're pulling two or three cars the second you start putting either heavy cars behind it or more than like three or four like either box cars or whatever it really struggles to pull and I don't think it's supposed to have traction tires but 
without traction tires, this model isn't very strong, which I wish it kind of had more strength to it. The locomotive itself is pretty heavy, or well, not pretty heavy because it's a really small locomotive, but for its size, it's got a good little bit of weight to it. And so same for the tender, but it is just not a good puller. So it doesn't look good when you're, well, it looks fine when you're pulling just a few little cars, but I wish I could have it pulling at least a 10, 15 car train which is something more you'd see these little 440s pulling on like a little branch line maybe or something but yeah i'd always wanted one of these and i remember seeing some old delaware and hudson ones that looked almost identical to this thing that were from the i believe the 1880s 1870s the either 1870s to 1890s, but you would have seen these in the late 19th, early 20th century. But the way this locomotive looks, it looks more like this is a 20th century model because those 19th century D&H ones kind of had that nice gloss to them and all. I think that they do for like passenger service and all to make them look really nice and shiny. But besides that though, this is a really pretty model and it looks super nice going around the layout, especially when you put Again, some nice old cars behind it. But yeah, besides that though, I'll play those few videos and that wraps up the review. and that is today's video here i hope you enjoyed watching again if you did make sure to give this video a big old thumbs up of course but yeah part two will be looking at more locomotives of course i believe part two and part three are going to be five locomotives each so a little less but still plenty of different types of locos and all that stuff to choose from so yeah anyways i'll see you all in the next video slash live stream slash whatever i do so uh stay tuned and bye bye